Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss large language model limitations and hallucination. Here are the lesson objectives. So, uh, after ChatGPT was released to the public in uh, late 2022 and was used by many people in the ensuing months, uh, a very unfortunate thing happened where someone prompted ChatGPT to tell them about uh, you know, people in academia who were accused of sexual harassment, and it described an incident involving a, a professor that was totally false, it was totally made up. There was nothing in the news about it or anything like that. And this became a big deal because it highlighted something called hallucination that's a big problem with these large language models. And so why did the model totally make this up? This seems, you know, really uh, incredulous that this would happen. Well, here's why. When humans are asked a question, we reason through things logically. We think of prior knowledge and we assemble facts together as best we can to answer a question. The large language models are simply predicting the next word in a very sophisticated way. They're mimicking. And because they're so good at mimicking, what they produce looks very convincing when it's presented in natural language. But we have to remember that this is not the same process that we as humans go through when we answer the same question. The underlying process is totally different between man and machine in this case. So why does this occur? Well, you know, fundamentally, uh, the large language model is looking for words that kind of fit together. And if it, you know, if it's prompted with this sexual harassment case with information about academia, sexual harassment, and then it, you know, pulls up the next word that has to do with a given academic department in a given school, and then kind of associate with those words as the name of a professor who may be unrelated to the case, but related to that department, it just kind of fits the output uh, that the model is providing. So it's okay and it goes with it. And of course, this will likely get worse based on some of the settings that you have, such as temperature. The other thing is the large language model has really no way to check if it's hallucinating or not because we check the facts by looking at other sources of information, things that are structured, things that have are known to be factual. The large language model is not designed to make such considerations in the first place. So there's no way to go and check. The other thing is the data sets these things are trained on are huge, and they'll include fictional data as part of the content. So that kind of stuff can get mixed in there as well. They're also not optimized to refuse to answer to most questions. And so it's very difficult for the model to say, I don't know. Now, granted, they're getting better at this, but in general, they're not they wouldn't be a very useful model if they would over and over again say, I don't have the answer to that. The context of the prompt can also possibly lead to hallucinations. And there has been cases where some of the uh, hallucinations have been reported in the media were created by people who were sort of gaming the large language model by artificially creating prompts to drive it to certain results. So will hallucinations be solved? And it would be hard for us to solve them as users of this technology if you don't have access and you're not working for one of these firms, but is this problem going to go away? And so in general, it's likely that we're going to see significant reduction in hallucinations, especially in things that can be confirmed easily. This is an active area of focus, especially for the companies that make these models. They're financially incentivized to address this as much as they can. However, that said, despite the engineering work that these OpenAI and, and Google and others are doing to reduce this problem, it's not likely that they're going to be able to solve it in all cases. And it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to have the model say it can verify that the answer is correct. 
uh, at least with the current architectures, because there's no notion of, of say, fact-checking. There's no structured data to go with that. And the reason why that's going to be tough to do is to have structured data, you have to do a lot more with the data other than push it through the model. Remember, part of the success of being able to train such large models is the ability to avoid labeling all the data and just shoving a bunch of textual data in it, masking it in different ways to come up you know, with the resulting model. If you are now structuring the data, you are losing the ability to scale to very large data sets. And most of the companies that are addressing these problems, they're using things like reinforcement learning with human feedback and stuff like that to help uh, get around this. And like I said, while I think it's going to improve, it's going to be likely not possible to verify this in the general case. Now, for specific use cases of an LLM, it could be that you can extensively mitigate the problem with hallucinations, uh, partially because if you're dealing with a very specific problem where you've designed prompts and you have access to additional data on the side to verify stuff, you're dealing with a much smaller problem. You maybe have some trusted data. Uh, you could even be doing things to limit uh, the scope of the output. And all these facets lead to a much better chance of mitigating the hallucinations and maybe even in some cases eliminating them. However, hallucinations are just one of several limitations of large language models. They are powerful tools, but they are tools, and they're not useful in all cases, and that's why throughout this course we've talked about many different aspects of machine learning. And so, you know, the first, you know, probably biggest one is there's no access to the model. These are models with billions of parameters, hugely expensive to train, and they generally reside behind the locked doors of the companies that make them. So that's a big minus right there. Uh, the inability to use the model when not connected to the internet. That's also a, a serious uh, weakness of these. What happens if you're in an environment where connectivity is reduced or limited uh, now you, you don't have access to your model, whereas if you had just trained something, um, like we learned in other parts of the course, you could actually put that model on the device and not have to rely on your network. That, of course, is inherently tied to re uh, reliance of availability of the vendor itself, making, you know, so if that vendor has any issues where their servers are down, suddenly you can't solve your task anymore. Also, vendors are not really driven to, uh, you know, make all the models work in the exact same way. And so you may have cases where prompts for one LLM made by one company won't work as well on a different LLM from another company. And finally, in general, uh, the results of these large models uh, it's very difficult to align them to what is desirable for human beings. And this is considered one of the big open problems in artificial intelligence and machine learning today is referred to as the alignment problem. Uh, you know, I believe that for large language models um, in the current architectures, this is likely not solvable as is, and we'll need additional technology uh, to address this challenging problem. So that wraps it up for our uh, lecture on limitations and hallucinations in large language models. Thanks for watching.